welcome to the Solutions Oriented Leader Podcast. Today, we've got the famous Bruce Turkel. Bruce has worked for some of the most compelling brands in the world, including Hasbro, American Express, Nike, Charles Schwab, Citicorp, Discovery Networks, and so many more. You might have seen him speak at MIT or Harvard if you were there. You also might have seen him on CNN, Fox, MSNBC. The guy is all over the place. Bruce Turkel, he's now coming to us from Los Angeles. Uh, he's out there getting ready to give some more speeches and talking to all the different networks about the coronavirus and branding and what's happening to companies out there. So in part one of this two-part blog cast, we're going to talk about one, branding, and in the second part, we'll talk about leadership and solutions-oriented leadership and, and how to look at some of the solutions that we can have to resolve some of the issues that we're having right now in the world and how we can adapt and live life and move forward in a positive way during the coronavirus outbreak. So Bruce, welcome to the program. Hey Rick, good morning. Good morning. So tell me a little bit about your perspective on what's happening to some of the brands. Obviously the stock market has been dropping uh, quite drastically. So let us, let us in on what your thoughts are, what's happening, what we can do. And you wrote a phenomenal blog about the coronavirus. So if you haven't seen Bruce's blog yet, go check out brewstertel.com and check out this blog on the coronavirus. Well, let's first of all, let's first of all define the way we're using the word brand, because what you just said, how it's affecting brands, what you're really talking about right now is how it's affecting companies. And companies are in fact identified by their brands. But the, the virus is affecting brands in two very different ways. How is it affecting companies? Well, we see it. We see all of these organizations that are shutting down their operations. We see what's happening in the stock market. We see what's happening in um, retail. We see what's happening in concerts, all of that. Those are companies. Now, the brands themselves, the brand value, the way that people uh, relate to your product, the way they relate to your services, and the way they trust or don't trust you, that's what we're going to see happen over time. Needless to say, the brands that people feel comfortable with, the brands that people have a relationship with, are the ones that people are going to listen to. Without getting political, it's easiest to look at the political um, arena to see that happening. Whatever side of the aisle you're on is irrelevant, but the point is there are people you trust and people you don't trust. There are news sources you trust and news sources you don't trust. That's brand value. And you can tell what brand value you support or don't support and which ones are actually getting stronger right now and which ones are getting weaker by watching your own reaction to what's going on based on what these brands are telling you. So let's take a look at some of the brands, maybe like the Princess Cruise Ship. You're out there in California. They're out there circling San Francisco. Um, they've had some challenges because they didn't dock right away and let some people off the boat. And now a majority of the people are testing positive. And some people haven't even been tested yet. They just decided to ground all 18 of their vessels at this point in time. So give us your perspective on how they're responding and if you think it's effective and how it may affect the brand into the future. Perfect. So once again, we have to look at both the product or the service and we have to look at the brand. If you think of a cruise line in general, what a cruise line does is really provide on the one hand, a floating hotel. On the other hand, they provide a complete environment, right? You're on their ship, you're out in the water. They are housing you. They are feeding you. They are entertaining you. They are transporting you. And then the things you don't think about, they are also protecting you. They are also controlling you. They are telling you where you can go, when you can go there, how you can go there. So in a lot of ways, a cruise ship acts like a miniature government. A cruise ship acts like a miniature family. A cruise ship acts like a miniature community. Now take that to the brand. If we have that sense that we are on somebody's cruise ship and we are trusting them to take care of us, just like we trust a community or a government, then you got to say, they didn't really do a very good job of it, did they? I understand the, uh, the realities. How could they have been ready for this? How can they anticipate this? All of that could be true. However, from a consumer point of view, as consumers, we expect them to have our best interests at heart and to take best care of us. And clearly, they failed in that regard. 
Now, the big question becomes, does this now become a failure of this particular cruise line and that brand, or does it become a failure that then grows to all cruise lines and the cruising brand that remains to be seen? That's why organizations like CLIA, the Cruise Line International Association, doesn't just manage one brand or another. They try to work with all the brands because our reaction to this is going to be the long-term effect to their business. Will we ultimately trust cruise lines again? Or are we going to say, hey, I'm not going out there because once I'm out there, <laughs> they don't know how to take care of me. Sure. And one of your major expertise is not just in the branding, but is in the travel and tourism industry. So tell us, give me three things that you would advise them to do right now to one, control what's happening and also get them to focus on the future and what they're going to have to do to repair things once the coronavirus scare has ended or flattened off. Great. Will do. So the first thing they have to do, and I think you can say that this cruise line did not do it, is they have to demonstrate that the people they are currently taking care of, meaning res uh, guests and, and vacationers who are with them, feel completely comfortable and confident that they're being treated properly and they're being taken care of. I happen to be in a hotel right now in Los Angeles, as you mentioned. The only thing I've received that tells me anything about this hotel caring about me is a piece of paper they slid under my door that said all the typical stuff. We at this hotel endeavored to take care of, you know, blah, 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 blah. And there are um, sanitizer squirt bottles at every entrance. They haven't done anything else to let me know that I should feel comfortable or confident. We all have these magical devices. We all have access to Facebook, Instagram, TripAdvisor. And that means that everybody who's at your property is an instant critic with a video camera and an audience, and they can be spreading the word. So the number one thing for airlines, hotels, cruise lines, any organizations to do is to make the people who are on their properties feel comfortable. Because it goes to your book all about them. Well, that's probably Which is why really I, what it's all about. It's about taking care of the people that you take care of, because that is what feeds your brand and feeds your product. And, and if you haven't seen Bruce's book yet, all about them, New York Times, unbelievable. It's in stores all over on Amazon. You can pick it up. It really explains how the customer thinks, how we need to think as entrepreneurs in order to take care of our clients and customers into the future so that we can retain them and then they will tell others about us. That's exactly right. Thank you, Rick. The whole point is to stop looking at your brand as the entrepreneur, as the owner, as the operator, and start looking at your brand as the customer. Your brand, believe it or not, is not about you and it's not about your, cust about your company. It's about your customer. It's about what your customer thinks and more importantly, what your customer feels about the relationship they have with you and your company. If your customer feels that their life is better because they do business with you, you have a powerful brand. So that instantly tells hoteliers, restaurateurs, cruise line operators, and by the way, other company uh, operators, that the whole point is to make the people you're doing business with feel that they are, their lives are better because they do business with you. That's a great point. And what's one more thing that you can give us that can be happening right now as a proactive step in the tourism industry in order for them to recover from what's going to be a massive, massive loss that may take years to come back from? Well, needless to say, when the people are running out the door to escape the fire, there's nothing you can do to stop them. So I've had a number of cancellations, as you can imagine, of speaking engagements and consulting gigs and airline, different airlines, different hotels, different, you know, I had theater tickets because I was going to be in New York next week, different things that I needed to get out of. And my assistant is at very different experiences. Some hotels, airlines and the like say, no problem, we understand. Others say, listen, we will give you a, re a credit, but not a refund. Others say, sorry, non-refundable. Well, you can be pretty sure that right now I have no option. I simply have to cancel. But when this is all over, when we go back to the regular way of doing things, we're going to remember exactly who treated us well and who did not. So I would, I would counsel, I have been counseling my clients, don't 
throw the baby out with the bash, bath water. Don't get so worked up, so excited that you forget that pendulums swing in both directions. And right now the pendulum might be all the way over here, but it's going to swing back over here. As I ended my blog with the other day, you should treat your 401k and your IRA the same way you treat your face. Don't touch it. Remember that things are going to get better. They're not right now, and they're gonna get worse before they get better, but they will get better. There's nothing you can do right now about your investments, and there's nothing you can do about keeping those customers who don't wanna do business right now. Let them go gracefully. Yes, you're gonna take a loss. Deal with it, because you have a lot of business ahead of you. That's some great advice, Bruce. And, and tell everybody how they can get in touch with you and get some advice from you, some consulting, whatever they have to offer, especially when it focuses on keynote speeches, tourism, and brand value, brand consulting. Very easy. Every way to get in touch with me is simply my name, Bruce, B-R-U-C-E, Turkel, T-U-R-K-E-L. My website is BruceTurkel.com, Twitter, Facebook, on and on and on. It's all my name. Simply go to my website. There's videos. There's access to the blog. There's access to my marketing minutes. Everything you want is right there. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much, Bruce, for being a guest on the Solutions Oriented Leader podcast and giving the experience to our visitors, our viewers, what they can do right now to proactively deal with the coronavirus scare and also to kind of keep calm so that they don't ruin and destroy relationships out of anxiety and stress. You know, when the, uh, when the UK was being bombed in World War II, they put up signs in the, in the tubes and the subways. We've all seen them. It said, keep calm and carry on. That's really good advice. That's what we should do. Live your life, do the right thing, be healthy, be safe, and don't, uh, don't react in such a way that you cause bigger problems for yourself and your brand. Dr. Rick, it's been an honor and a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Bruce. To learn more about solutions-oriented leadership, please visit our website at rickgoodman.com or feel free to email me at info at rickgoodman.com and please subscribe to the Solutions Oriented Leader on iTunes or your favorite podcast app to get your weekly episodes automatically.